Hey, this is Chris, the SAT expert at Magoosh. I've had over 15 years experience helping students ace the SAT. And today, we're gonna talk about compound and simple interest. This is something that will show up on the math section. And when you see it, you're gonna see dollar signs. That is, there's gonna be a question and it's gonna talk about a certain dollar amount that either increases because it's compounded or because it's not compounded. And to show how this works in an actual question, let's check out a few over here. So, when we dive into here, what we're gonna look at is this big idea. The test is more concerned about knowing instead of solving. And what I mean by that is they don't want you to actually come up with this, an exact number. They're just gonna give you the numbers in the problem and then the answer choices are gonna be an equation or at least different equations in each answer choice. And you have to put the numbers in the right place. That's all they're really testing. Now, when we talk about simple and compound interest here, I'll solve a couple of questions just to show you how that looks. But then again, I want you to remember that the main takeaway is putting the numbers in the right places and matching that with the correct answer choice. So let's take a look here at simple interest. The way this works is I is equal to PRT. However you want to remember that, but I like to actually take this apart and to show you what each thing means, and then it makes a lot more sense. So interest is the money that you owe on something. It's this extra money that you owe because over a period of time, you haven't paid it back. And so the way that they equate this is or turn this into equation is by putting P is the original amount, so principal. I know that can be a bit confusing because we're introducing a new term that people don't usually use. They would just say, how much did I originally loan you? Original amount. R is the interest rate. So let's say 5%. I gave you $100, loaned it to you, and then said, I'm going to charge you 5% over that 100 after every, and then we get T, and that's really just like the time interval. Is that every day? That's kind of a mean loan. Is that every month, every year? We need to know that, and of course, the question will always tell you that, and then you just plug in T, whatever that number is, into that equation. And so essentially, again, it is interest is equal to the principal or the original amount times the interest rate times time. Okay, times the interest rate times, actually have a real question here with Maury, borrowed 2,000 from his bank at an interest of 4% over one year. How much does he owe after six months? So let's break this apart. We know again that I is equal to PRT. In this case, I is the original amount, or sorry, is the money, sorry, <laughs> is the money above 2,000 that M Maury owes. And so 2,000 is the amount that the bank is giving him. So we're gonna try to figure out what is this amount over the 2,000 that he's gonna have to pay back to the bank. So he's gonna have to pay the 2,000 and this amount, and that is what the interest is. So now we can go to the original amount or the principal, which was 2,000, as we can see from the question here. The rate is 0.04, why not 0.4? Well, 4% is not the same as 0.4, that would be 40%. And so we wanna make sure that when we have 4%, it's 0.04. And then we have the time, and it's not six, be careful here, because it says over one year. T, this time interval is one year. And in this specific case, Maury's only taken six months and so that's six over the total 12 months which is one year which is one half of the entire thing and so now that we have these numbers we can set up our i equals prt so the interest is again the principal 2000 times the rate 0 0.04 times 0 0.5 and this gives us 40 dollars. and so that's that's how much he owes after this period but remember that he also owes the original 2000 so he would owe the bank $2,040. So it's always important to throw the original amount in there once you've actually found the interest. Now, if the question said, what is the interest? Then, of course, you would just put 40. So let's take a look here at another example with Allie and her bank offers a savings account that yields 6.5% over one year. If Allie deposits 4000 in her account, after 18 months, how much money does she have in the account? So now it's not just about the interest that is being gained, not the interest that she has to pay, but the interest that she gains and adding it to the original 4,000. And so we can just do this. We can say, okay, she has 4,000 and what's gonna be added is this I is equal to PRT. And so we wanna figure out what is this I? 4,000 plus I is how much money she'll have in her account. So again, we know that interest is the original, which is 4,000 times the rate, which in this case is 0.65 times 18. Be careful again, one year, 18 months. So that's the same as 18 over 12 or 1.5. Okay, so we can multiply this out using a calculator. 
and we can get that on the side is going to be $390. And so that is going to lead us to answer choice C. And there we have our answer. Now, again, I said something earlier, but don't worry about the math. They're usually not going to ask you that. They just want to make sure you put everything in the right place. And this is what the actual question is going to look like. Notice that answer choice D is what we just actually calculated. 4,000 plus the 4,000 times the 0 0.065 times the 1.5. And that is answer choice D. And so there you have it. That is simple interest. Now, what is compound interest exactly? Well, here's a formula. And I'm going to first tell you how the concept is different. So notice that Allie was taking the original 4,000 and then she was making a certain amount off of that. But she wasn't making interest off the extra amount. So to give you an example, say she had waited to, with that original 4,000, and she had waited a while. She had waited all the way till that, there was 8,000 in the account. I don't know how many years that would have taken, let's say five years, and or even maybe 10 years, but it doesn't matter. The point is, whenever you have this new number, you're not taking, let's say it was 5% interest. You're not taking 5% off that 8,000. You're always taking it off of the original 4,000. The difference, though, with compound interest is whatever the most recent number in the bank account was, and I think we ended that question, it was 4390 you'd be taking 5% off of that. And so the growings or the earnings grow quicker when it's compound interest because it's the percent off the growth, not the original sum. So to calculate that, we have to know this formula, which is a little bit more complicated. It is A, which is the accrued amount or total amount, is equal to P. Again, P principle stands for the original amount. And then you have one plus R, R is the rate, and you add those together. You always want to add those together. Notice they're in parentheses. And then you take them to a certain power or exponent. That caret sign means we're dealing with an exponent here. So that T is time. Complicated equation, but we're going to actually put it into action here with this question. And then we can see how all the pieces fit together. Notice again, I'm not asking you, or the question isn't asking you for an exact number. It's just asking you to plug things in. Of course, you won't have this nifty formula on the test book like come test day. But if you have it in your head, memorize, and you can plug things into the right places. So we have Mariah, $2,000 she's invested. That is the principle. So we put that where the P is. So A is equal to, and I'm going to put the 2,000 here. I'll just put 2K for 2,000. And then 1 plus rate. 5% is 0 0.05. So it would be 1 plus 0 0.05. And then T is the total time. It says after six months, how, does she, how much does she have in her account? Now, the fact that we even know this is a compounding question will be shown in the question itself. It will say compounds annually. You'll see that word. So you'll know, aha, it's time for the compound interest formula. And annually is the time period. Now, T is not the same as time period or time interval, but how many uh, times or units of that time interval are there. So for instance, if it was over two years, it, T would equal two. Or if it were five years, it would equal T would equal five. Here, it's only six months. So it's half of the unit of a year. Again, annually means one year. So therefore, that exponent T would be one half. Looking down at the answer choices A through D now, I can right away eliminate B and D because they have two as an exponent. And then I look at A and it doesn't capture that 1.05 like the way C does. And just like that, without even having to solve anything really, I know the correct answer. And that's how the test is going to test this concept. And now you know. And there you have it. That's how compound and simple interest show up on the SAT. Now, if you want more tips and strategies, click on the videos to your left. And if you want even more, then check us out at sat.magoosh.com. And you can click on the link in the description below.